Okay, so let's uh, um, look at the post-processing um, aspects of the schism. So first of all, let's um, look at one particular common task we all have to do at this uh, extracting time series. So um, there are multiple ways of um, uh, extracting time series out of uh, either the uncombined or combined outputs of a schism. Um, so uh, the quickest one, most efficient one, probably is through the post-processing for transcripts. So first of all, you need to compile those scripts. Those are the serial scripts. Okay, and the uh, if you go to the uh, source code bundle, you will uh, find this directory called post processing Fortran, and inside you find all those uh, scripts. Um, so, for example, this is a um, script you use to um, look at the variables and all nodes um, and a particular uh, uh, vertical location or vertical, yeah, um, uh, entire vertical column. So, and X, Y, Z, um, as you can guess, um, is to extract the time series and the point X, Y, Z, right? And all times X, Y, T, on the other hand, is basically um, and a fixed lo horizontal location X, Y, and a particular time, you know, and all Z locations, that means like a CTD cast. And X, Y, Z, T, um, on the other hand, uh, extract time series for flow through. So you basically specify X, Y, Z, and T. Okay. Um, so let's look at the, uh, they, they all pretty much look similar to each other. So we only need to uh, uh, show you one. So this is a uh, X, Y, Z. Um, so um, header of this uh, subscript, uh, this uh, particular script, uh, shows the uh, all the required inputs. So we will ask you uh, some questions uh, through the uh, uh, screen interaction. And then uh, you need uh, um, the uh, locations of all the stations you want to extract from are uh, specified in this station.dp, okay? Alternatively, you can also use, uh, instead of using the build point, you can also use a station format, but uh, typically we use a BP format, the build point format. And the vertical grid that in the big grid that in must be in this directory or the parent directory, okay? And of course, you need to have all the um, outputs either combined or uncombined. So the way to compile this script is through this um, command, you know, if you use ifort. So in addition to this particular uh, script with uh, output 9 x, y, z, you also need to have some utility uh, scripts. Okay, so utility library scripts. Um, so those are found in the um, directory above called the utility lib. Okay, and you just copy and paste this, you should be able to compile this, uh, this particular script and they compiled uh, executable is like this, okay. And we already um, uh, copied this to our local bin directory. Okay, in my home bin directory. So you should be able to find the, uh, uh, all those compiled scripts. So one thing, um, you, if you don't want to uh, compile all those scripts one by one, you can also try um, after say make, you just say make. Okay, instead of make a, sch a piece schism, you just say make. You make all the uh, scripts for you. So once you have compiled the scripts, Fortran scripts, you can go to the wrong directory. This is a 6B directory with the outputs. Okay, so outputs uh, has all the uh, uncombined outputs, 40 stacks of them, and some combined outputs. I didn't combine all of them. I, just want, I want to show you how to extract the time series from those uncombined raw outputs, okay? So first of all, you need to have um, um, all the locations defined the station.bp, right? So uh, we inside the directory I sent you, you should be able to find this station.in. So this is already a BP format. So this is the um, input to the schism where uh, you do the online extraction when the run is still ongoing. 
the uh, code will output the station output and the 76 stations. So you can use the same list of stations for post-processing offline extraction, or you can um, select your own um, list of stations. You know, so for simplicity, we just use this. Okay, so we do a symbolic link station.in copy to station.bp right and then um, just in case v grid or you also need a vertical grid okay and then you just simply run the nine xyz scripts okay you ask you uh, series questions okay so first of all do you want to work on uncombined uh, or combined outputs so right now i didn't combine all of them so just put zero uncombined and for uncombined we typically specify the maximum array size so what this does is and this particular fortran script or other fortran scripts were written for efficiency so instead of reading one record at a time it allows you to read multiple chunks of data multiple chunks of records at a time okay so this is done for efficiency so uh, in order to do this uh, you need to specify maximum array size so you're basically um, exchanging efficiency uh, exchanging efficiency for the um, array size okay so the inside the script you find one or two very large size array so depending on the memory requirement of, um, of your system. Um, you know, maybe two gigabyte is a reasonable number. That's why I put a um, suggested value here. This is uh, roughly two gigabyte, okay? So if your system has smaller amount of memory, you need to reduce this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I made that wrong. Okay, so let's start again. And then we want to specify our, our maximum array size. Okay, typically for uncombined um, outputs, and then specify maximum array size two gigabyte and one. So um, right now uh, the list of stations is given in station.bp instead of station.star, so it's one. And then because we uh, did this particular run run six b in non net. Okay, so. Um, especially with very high resolution meter scale resolutions, you probably want to use nearest point um, interpolation instead of uh, by uh, instead of the default um, linear interpolation. So this is a choice. For this case, it's not that high resolution. You can use either. So let's use the nearest point. And then this, um, it will ask you for the uh, variable name Okay, you want a particular uh, variable name of your interest. So for example, we we're interested in elevation. So for a list of uh, station names, you can um, do NC dump of any of those uh, NCTF output. You should be able to see all those uh, lists or you go to prem.nml in the shout section, you know, you'll show you all the station uh, outputs, uh, output uh, variable names. So this uh, variable name um, is uh, node-based, okay? Most of our output variables are node-based for convenience, but we do allow um, uh, several uh, variables uh, that are not node-based, okay? So like element or site-based even, okay? So for this one, it's node-based. Start the first day to 40th day, and this elev the elevation is a 2D variable, so the last question um, is irrelevant, right? You don't have the coordinates, so just use, choose either one, zero or one, okay? Then the code will start extracting from those uncombined outputs. system is a bit slow today. Um, okay, while it's running, let me show you, go ahead and show you how to um, visualize the um, results. 
event lab. Okay, so let's push this to a background. And for MATLAB visualization, you need um, a few files. So this, as you can guess, is for the horizontal slab. This is for the vertical transect. And both of uh, those scripts will require this um, utility script. Basically, a uh, MATLAB script allows you to um, visualize the um, entire field, entire domain um, from the uncombined or combined uh, results. So for example, we are, if you are interested in the surface salinity, right? So you just uh, look at the, this uh, slab um, script, you require some um, arguments, okay, inputs. So uh, we'll go through them one by one later, but uh, um, um, the only thing you need to change is the appearance of the final um, uh, visualization. So by default, um, you generate the animation, ABI animations, okay? So uh, there are two types of uh, plots. One is a scalar plot and one is a quiver uh, vector plot. So for salinity, um, we, uh, that's a scalar plot. So you need to define this uh, color range. So for example, 10 PSU to, or, or let's say uh, temperature, okay, 10 to 30. Okay, so that's the only thing you need to change. And then let's go to change it to this directory. And then you do you say help schism snap. You tell you the usage. Okay, and then schism snap. Now the first argument is uncombined or combined. So zero means uncombined, and base is a uh, where the um, outputs are, okay, so the uh, base directory is where actually the, the edge grid uh, is, you know, one directory above the outputs. So it's current directory. We already changed it to this directory. And we're interested in salinity, salt. And then we want to, um, you can visualize, for those 3D variables, you can visualize um, along a sigma surface or you can visualize uh, uh, on a Z plane, okay? So for here, for surface salinity, we just use, uh, for simplicity, we just use uh, surface. And the code will, will do, the code will um, automatically do extrapolation above the surface and bottom um, if you specify the coordinates. So for this particular run, um, we have, uh, total 45 levels. So we just, uh, for surface, if you want to visualize the surface salinity, so it's 45 here, right? So, um, and next one is the for spherical, uh, the global grid. Um, so default is uh, no ramp up, no ramp around, um, so zero. And the stacks, so, so for example, we want to look at the last day, right? And then next, the n spool is basically subsampling uh, frequency. So if you put one, you will include all of them. If you two, you basically skip every other uh, record. And last flag is test flag. So always do test, make sure the appearance is uh, what you want it. Okay, so n no means that you will generate the uh, AVI animation. So let's do that. For large grid, it may take a, a bit of time. So um, MATLAB is not as efficient as the uh, visit. Um, I'll show you the visit next. So let's go back here. It's already uh, still running. Today is really slow. Yeah, still running. <clears throat> it should, normally it should be done very quickly. Persistence slow today. Okay, so now it's done. The output is 4.18. So the, because this is a, a, a scalar you are extracting, so for vector like horizontal velocity, you have 4.18 and 4.19, okay. So system is...
Okay, so if this is a simple ASCII output, um, so simple format, the first column is uh, um, timing days, and then followed by the uh, elevation or whatever variable, and first station, second station, third station, etc. So now let's go to the um, uh, math lamp. So this is SST and the uh, for beginning of the 40th stack. Okay, so this is a, so if you like this, then you go back uh, here and change it to N. Okay, it will generate the um, video for you. So I won't do this because it will take a while. So that's the um, horizontal stamp. So let's look into the um, vertical transit. So for, for vertical transect, you also have a list of the uh, arguments which are pretty much similar to each other. The only thing extra you need is this uh, um, um, transect.bp. So this is a build point you defined um, for the transect. So let's look at the, um, so uh, the way I usually do the um, transect is load the edge grid GR3 and they load, um, display the um, bathymetry and zoom into a specific region and then uh, create a, a series of build points. For example, if you are interested in particular trench near Timor Leste, um, so this is a, uh, suppose this is a transect we are interested in, just go to build, place build points. So uh, starting from, for example, here, and then just Timor list, go inside here, 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 here. Okay, and then save it as build point called transect.bp. Okay, so it should appear here. Transect.bp. So this is just a normal build point format. And X, this is a longitude, latitude, and Z coordinates do not matter for this purpose because we're going to extract the 3D um, structure out of this. Okay, so now let's launch the transect script. The first one is zero. Um, meaning that we are extracting from uncombined outputs. The base directory you work with is the current directory and the transect BP is basically uh, the build name, just transect.bp and variable name. So for example, temperature and then the 40 stack, not stack and then Stride of one and test it out. Okay, so before I do that, uh, again, I, I need to um, look at the appearance. Okay, so so again, there are two types of uh, visualizations. One is for scalar, another one's for the vector. So temperature is a scalar. So um, we put 10 to 30, for example. You need to change the color axis limit. Okay, and just launch it. Okay, now it's done, and this is a transect plot, and you can zoom in and you can play with it. Um, one thing you notice is that uh, you know the um, the shave cell is preserved in the transect plot. Okay, there's no staircase whatsoever. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, visit. So visit is the most comprehensive uh, visualization tool for schism. It takes uh, some effort to install, especially if you want to use the um, client server mode. That means you have to install visit on the Windows side and also visit on the Linux side. Um, so we have done that. Uh, if you have questions, you can um, ask for help. Um, from uh, uh, California uh, Department of Water Resource uh, Group. Okay, so launch visit and then um, open and format is a schism. And I want to link to our cluster. Okay. 
So uh, if you, this is not the latest version of visit, but if you use the latest version with the latest plugin, you should be able to visualize the uh, uncombined outputs. So this is not the latest version. So I can only um, visualize their combined outputs. So for example, we go to NOAA Pacific folder. Six B. So we want to filter um, the uh, double digit. Okay, now select, for example, the last stack. Okay, go to and, and then pseudo color for scalar, we usually use the pseudo color for vector, we usually use this vector, for example, the horizontal velocity surface or near bottom or depth average or 3D. Okay, you can visualize the 3D uh, vectors or 3D um, scalars. So suppose we are interested in uh, SST, so temp surface, uh, you can directly press draw. Okay, you appear. And um, the way to control the uh, attributes of the plot is double click this pseudo color. And for example, we want to define minimum maximum of maximum 30 degree and minimum of 10 degree, right? And accept. So now this you see uh, this nice color coming out. You can change the color schemes here. Um, you know, for example, like this. Okay. So this is a visit. You can, like I said, you can visualize the 3D quantities and do slicing, vertical slicing as well. Um, so let me show you, um, for example, we know the uh, 3D temperature and then do slice our, our operator, our attributes and then do slicing and then slice. And then you get this uh, pop-up window. Suppose we want to visualize the uh, 50 meters below free surface right, well, it's 50 meters below the uh, mean sea level. So you want to slice uh, against uh, the um, vector that is perpendicular to Z, um, uh, perpendicular, uh, parallel to Z axis. So you, at the origin of the, this uh, um, plane is defined by points. So for example, zero, zero minus 50 meters, right? Apply and then say draw. Uh, and you, you also need to auto scale because it's out of scale. Um, so eventually it will show up. Okay, and again, you can do the same thing, change the color, right? 30, 10 degrees. So you show up like this. So that's uh, everything I have to say here.